Hello, welcome back to the Starship Lightbreaker, the ship outfitted with the means to break the speed of light in every conceivable way. Today, what we're talking about is not some kind of space mind bendy cheating the laws of physics thing, but plain old faster than light, or in scientific language, tachyons. When each of us first heard the phrase faster than light, we imagined a pretty common sense picture. There was a light beam, and something was moving faster than it. Then we were told that's not possible because of causality, special relativity, and a bunch of other big sounding sciencey words. Hey Chris, you've talked on and on about how faster than light allows time travel, but you've never explained why going faster than light is so hard in the first place. That's right Lampson, thanks for bringing it up. It would help to have a better explanation than because Einstein said so. First, let's ask, what is light speed in reference to? Or what is absolute stopped? It's not the surface of the Earth, because the Earth is spinning and the Earth is going around the Sun. It's not the Sun, because the Sun is going around the center of the galaxy. And it's not the Milky Way galaxy, because all galaxies are moving relative to each other. So enough of trying to find something that's absolutely stopped. Let's try another technique and measure the speed of light in all directions to see what that gets us. Huh. That's funny. It says I'm stopped right now. No! The speed of light is the same in all directions for me! I'm the one who stopped! My detector and Lampson's disagree. Mine says the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 in all directions, but his says the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 plus his speed in that direction, and 3 times 10 to the 8 minus his speed in that direction. Our measurements disagree, so who is wrong? Is one of our detectors broken? No. That's the relative in relativity. We all measure the speed of light to be constant relative to us, but everything else changes. Lengths change, time changes, even mass changes. All these changes happen just perfectly so that the speed of light remains constant. Any speed I go, the speed of light is the same in all directions. The universe is centered on me. Now we have a sense for why getting faster than light is hard. From the perspective of someone who's traveling, the speed of light is always just as far away. From their perspective, they can't catch light beams. But what if Lampson keeps speeding up and speeding up and speeding up until he exceeds the speed of light in my reference frame? That can't happen because mass and time are relative. In my reference frame, his mass is increasing and his rate of time is slowing, and the limit is just perfect so that he can always approach but never cross the speed of light. And velocity is relative too. Even if there are two rockets going 90% the speed of light in different directions relative to you, they're not going 180% the speed of light relative to each other, but 99%. None of this is speculation. Not only is it supported by 100 years of experiments, but it's used in technologies like particle accelerators and satellite clocks. And that's why it's so hard to go faster than light without cheating physics. So, how do we do it? There's nothing stopping us from taking the special relativity equations and plugging in faster than light velocities. We would describe objects traveling at these speeds as tachyonic and the particles they're made of as tachyons. So let's do that and, oh, we get a square root of a negative number. This means that if something is traveling faster than light, its mass, energy, momentum, and subjective rate of time are not positive, not negative, but in a third numerical direction. Imaginary. What does this mean? We have no idea. It could mean it's simply impossible. But we do use imaginary numbers in other areas of physics, like electricity and quantum physics, so maybe it just works. If that's the case, we'll have to work out new faster than light laws of physics, because classical physics, like Newton's laws, just don't work with imaginary numbers. Quantum physics and general relativity do though, so we'll have something to start with. How would those theories deal with imaginary mass? 
I'm too lazy to calculate it. What can I say? I haven't been a grad student in years. Feel free to try your hand at the calculations yourself. On the other hand, it could be that in the faster than light regime, the numbers under the square root change places. In that case, we wouldn't have to worry about imaginary numbers. There is precedent for this, as college students learn in introductory quantum physics. Or it could be that the relativistic mass is positive and the rest mass is imaginary, canceling out the i from the square root. After all, if an object is traveling faster than light, then the concept of rest mass doesn't really make that much sense. The fact is, tachyons are beyond any experiment or observation we've ever been able to do, and we just don't know what properties they would have. So, let's assume tachyons do exist. How would we use them for faster-than-light technology? Communication is easy. All we'd have to do is figure out how to create and detect tachyons. This would of course allow for backward-in-time communication, but we've covered that ad nauseum in the past on this channel, so we'll skip it for today. Ships and people would be another matter altogether. As we already mentioned, we can't get there simply by accelerating across the speed of light. So we would have to transform our matter instead. This is a problem because in order to exist, we need chemistry and atoms. Which means there would have to be tachyonic versions of the exact same chemistry and atoms, or we'd all be dead really, really fast. The possibilities ranging from a nuclear explosion to a black hole. And to sleep in a sea of stars, Christopher Paolini gets around this problem by creating Markov bubbles, which effectively turn a region of space into a giant tachyon. Inside that bubble, matter behaves normally as if it's moving through normal space. It's a lot like a warp drive, except it uses modified particle physics instead of general relativity. That's all I have to say on tachyons. Because it's outside the realm of known science, it's pretty open for sci-fi speculation. Tell me what you think of Lampson in the comments, and subscribe for more awesome science and sci-fi. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.